everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. We're going to talk today about cognitive behavioral therapy. It's the most effective therapy ever studied and it's been around for about 50 years, but a lot of people don't understand what it means and what it's about. So again, this is never a substitute for therapy, but it might give you some insights and some information that you might find helpful. Uh, we'll jump right in. So cognitive behavioral therapy is based on the idea that our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves drive our emotions, our attitudes and actions, which some people refer to as the behavior, um, which feed into consequences, and then that consequence feeds back into our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves. So the interesting thing to note is that these thoughts and beliefs about ourselves happen um, and are pretty solidified before we reach five years old. That's why it's so important to pour into our children when they're little, and a lot of people um, sort of un don't understand how much that matters when a child is small. So what are some of those underlying core beliefs that children um, internalize before their fifth birthday? The most damaging ones are, uh, I'm worthless, I'm unlovable, I'm a burden, I'm too much, I'm to blame, and I am helpless or powerless. We talked in, in our trauma um, video about powerlessness and, and so any kind of trauma early on makes a child feel helpless and hopeless and powerless and um, if a, an adult is not there to sort of help them feel like they are okay and that their feelings matter, that can be really overwhelming. Um, they can also feel like they're not smart enough or they're not good enough. So those are some of the core underlying beliefs that get started in that early, early stage. Then if you think about it, you take those core underlying beliefs and you hit school and so then your attitude and your actions, your emotions about yourself lead into a actions at school and then that feeds into consequences and that feeds back into that thought and belief about yourself. So if you feel like you're worthless or not good enough, then those um, early experiences in school are going to be challenging and you're not going to feel like you have what it takes to to, to do okay in school and then you're, the consequence of that is that maybe you don't do well in school and then you feel like you're not worthy. So you can see how this negative feedback loop starts and then kind of builds up steam over time as you go into uh, early adolescence then it even gets worse um, and people even add on new beliefs <clears throat> that sort of are piggybacked onto those old beliefs. So you hit um, early adolescence and then you feel like, well, I'm also not, uh, not only not smart enough and not good enough, but I'm not skinny enough, I'm not cute enough, I'm not um, athletic enough, I'm not anything. So, so then that feeds into your emotions about yourself, your actions and your attitudes and the consequences of that feedback around. You know, it, it starts um, impacting how we create relationships uh, maybe we accept relationships that we shouldn't accept and we accept people bullying us that we shouldn't accept and we don't stand up for ourselves or take care of ourselves and so all those attitudes and actions um, then have consequences and then we feel worse about ourselves. So you can see again how this feedback loop happens. So um, that also tends to feed into what we look at as the power, powerfulness and powerlessness um, feedback loop and so a lot of kids when they internalize that um, powerlessness as a child they either are set up to um, sort of fall into victim roles in their relationships um, in school or they can actually decide that I don't want to be powerless so I'm going to be powerful and they can turn into bullies at this stage. Um, a lot of times those are people who were victims early on and they felt victimized and their only solution for it was to be the bully. That's a belief that I'm either bullied or I'm the bully and I don't want to be bullied and so I'm going to be the bully. Obviously the, that's a lie um, and that's, those are not the only options but that's the belief that's driving the emotion and the attitude and the action. It's driving those consequences and it's feeding back around. So these are all the lies that children have sort of absorbed um, in early childhood and then reinforced and uh, piggybacked more lies and uh, beliefs onto those things. So when they come into adulthood, they have all of those things driving that, that same bus. 
Um, so that again, that feeds into relationships, it feeds into work relationships, and, um, and all of that. So how do we resolve this? That's the most important part, obviously. The reframe, when we step back and look at all of these things as untruths, um, and really understand that there are no children who are worthless, who are unlovable, who are a burden. Well, all children are too much. They're all challenging. Um, but that's the joy and beauty of parenting and the joy and beauty of children is that they are amazing and overwhelming and they need a lot. So um, no child should be rendered to feel powerless. And if that happened to you, then I'm sorry for that. And, and it's really important that you uh, resolve that trauma so that you don't feel that way for the rest of your life. Um, everybody has gifts and strengths, and everybody is human and has struggles. So those, those truths are really important. So when we look at stepping back from those lies and trying to find the truths about us, it's really important that you look at what who you are as a real person. So we are our relationships and we are our values. So if, if you want to look at who you are and what your thoughts and beliefs about yourself really ought to be, look at your values. What do you value? What's important to you? Um, what do other people value in you? How, who, how, do they, how do other people see you? A lot of times I'll, I'll ask this of a client and they'll say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But when we dig, we can see that, um, you know, they'll say, well, everybody at work thinks I'm really good at my work, and everybody thinks I'm pretty funny, and, um, and my husband really loves me, and, you know, I guess I'm a really good parent because my daughter is really happy and healthy, and the, the kids at my work, they really value what I say and what I do, and, you know, so they start to recognize how other people see them. So it's really important that you take out the old lie that I'm worthless and I'm a burden and I'm um, unlovable and put in the new truths and then see that those truths then drive the emotion and attitude of wow I really am worthwhile and I am valuable and I am um, somebody who has values and is doing the best I can and I'm a human and I have struggles and strengths and then that drives consequences of positive nature and that drives the feeling of and the thought that I guess I am worthwhile and I am lovable and I am worthy. So then those thoughts and beliefs continue to drive those attitudes, emotions and actions and continue to drive those positive consequences and around and around we go until we rebuild a sense of self. Now, obviously that is not a perfect world and we get triggered sometimes so you can be going along just fine and then be triggered by an old um, an old memory of some time when you felt worthless and and um, and a lot of times people would be triggered by interesting things like uh, financial crisis can trigger that feeling of being unworthy and being a failure um, when truly it's a financial crisis that happens to everybody and it could be just something that happened to you and it's not about you and um, and everybody loves you the same, your thoughts and beliefs about yourself should not really change. Um, you just have to take the attitude and action of, I'm okay, I'm a human, going through human struggle. And the consequence of that is that you still feel good about yourself even though you're going through a struggle. And that's the ideal, is that we just wanna be resilient in our lives. So take a look at the thoughts and beliefs that are driving your emotions, attitudes, and actions, and driving those consequences and driving it back around challenge those thoughts and beliefs and look at the truths about you and your life and the relationships that you have and uh, and really see what you can come up with in that. Remember that we're all human and we all have struggles and strengths and that's so important in our lives and that hopefully we're doing our best to live in our values every day and those are the most important things in our lives. So I hope you found this helpful. Please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you again soon.